I'm Mary Jirasi and welcome to Outreach Programming. Today we are going to be fighting the fat with Charlie Afray, fitness expert and coach. Hey Charlie, how's it going? Hey, it's glad that, I'm glad that you were able to come down here. <sighs> it's about all I could do. I actually didn't work out yet, so I got to find out what I need to do to lose some weight. I know you have some great things in store for us today. Tell me about this circuit program you've developed for our show. Well, what we're going to do today is that there's a pretty much a three-step process and we're going to train our muscles so that way we can lose fat faster. We're also going to talk about nutrition, but if I could take a couple moments and talk about the training that we're going to do, the first thing you want to do is interval training. And the best thing to do with that is uh, the cardiovascular aspect of training your heart is to use a heart rate monitor. Um, I use a heart rate monitor extensively. Where can I get a heart rate monitor? Well, uh, your most, most of your local stores and also on the internet. Okay, you can buy one pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But you want to work within a range that uh, you're actually getting an exercise effect. So if you're not training hard enough and you're not training within your heart rate zone, you're really not exercising. The second part, after you do, what we're going to do is we're going to use running. After that, we're going to go into a circuit program utilizing the jump rope first and then also some resistance training with light weights. The way I designed the program, all you basically need, the equipment you need, is some light dumbbells and a bench. But you can also do this routine in a fully equipped gym with barbells and everything else. We're going to go through seven different exercises. It's going to be interval training because what you're going to do is do each exercise back to back without virtually rest. Wow. All you're going to do is just change between the exercises and change any equipment you need. You do the seven exercises and then you'll rest. And you watch your heart rate and you watch it come down to a certain percentage of zone or until you get your breath back. Then at that point, you get, once again do those seven exercises back to back. We're also going to alternate between upper body and lower body with those exercises to increase the fat burning effect. So it sounds like a really tight, quick, full body workout you could do in the safety of your own home if you don't prefer a gym or in a gym. As far as the uh, second part, that could take anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes depending on your uh, exercise level as far as how advanced you are, you is. But you just need to go out, you need to do it, you need to do the circuit three times, is that correct? It, well, for beginners, it, well, I would suggest doing the circuit once. Okay. To get used to it. Okay. Because if they just jump into doing it three times, they're probably going to be really sore for a couple of days, not be able to yeah. brush their hair, not be able to brush their teeth, and they're going to be, you know, they're going to think the circuit's torture. Okay. It's not meant to be torture, it's meant to be as a fish, excuse me, as effective and as efficient as possible to help you lose body fat. Okay, so take it easy, get through it, get to learn the, the program, is that correct? Absolutely. Eventually you work up to three routines, is that correct? You Actually, yes. You work your way up to three sets of doing the circuit. Well, let's join Charlie and our friend Craig as they go through the circuit routine and show us how to burn some fat. So here we are, we're going to start with the first half of the portion of the interval workout. We're going to start with a run. You can do this either outside or inside. Here I'm with Craig, and we're going to start on a treadmill here. So the first thing you're going to do is you know, get this moving here. And when we're doing intervals, what we're saying is we're going to do like just a normal walk for about a minute or two, three minutes, just to get the heart rate started, and just get a warm up. After that two to three minutes, you're gonna go into an interval sprint. Now sprinting could be many different things for different people. If you're new to exercise, I'm not gonna say that you, I want you to go full out Olympic sprint, like a dog is chasing you. No, a sprint could be just a quicker pace walk but something that's gonna get you a little breathless within 30 to 90 seconds. For someone who's more advanced and intermediate, they can actually do a full sprint for 30 to 90 seconds. And then they're gonna back off to just a basic walk to recover, so their heart rate comes back down. So you're gonna to wanna to also use a heart rate monitor for this. So we're bringing Craig up to his sprint for about 30 seconds. 
All the while, you want to basically do a heel strike. You want to just have a nice, relaxed type of run or sprint. So in this case, a sprint for Craig is basically a run. After the 30 seconds, his heart rate's going to be coming up. What's your heart rate? 161. 161. That's pretty high for now. And you would just bring it back down to a walk. So for your run or your wind sprints, you're gonna wanna do this over intervals, five or six times over a period of 10 minutes, and maybe upwards to eight to 10 times if you're going for a little longer, like 20 minutes. your interval sprints, whether it's outside or on a treadmill. Again, you're running anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. You're doing sprints anywhere between 30 to 90 seconds, and then resting and backing off again. Make sure you also can use your heart rate monitor and check your target heart rate zone. So now we're gonna move into uh, the resistance training along with the skipping rope. So when you go and get yourself the rope, what you wanna do is get the right size. So what you want to do is to measure the rope is step on the rope, bring the rope up pretty much right to under your armpits or even to this height. If it's down here or way up here, it's too long, here it's too short. So that's how you size for the rope. So you're going to choose your desired time to do the circuit routine. You're going to start with the rope and go into the weights, the resistance training that we'll be showing later. After that, you rest for about a minute to 90 seconds, and then you're gonna go again and start with the rope and go through all seven exercises, including the rope. So, Craig here is gonna start skipping the rope. You're gonna set your timer. In this case, I'm gonna set for about a minute. And if you're not used to skipping rope, what you might wanna do is first use what I call a propeller method. What that is, is just moving the rope in this fashion, so you kinda of get used to hearing it hit the floor, and you just, work with it so you're not getting tangled up every two to three seconds you get used to it you start doing x's when you're ready you switch and you begin so you might be using the propeller method or the x method for a couple of weeks until you get used to working with something that's inanimate like the rope as you can see he's staying pretty close to the ground he's not going to be jumping too far up if you jump too high up you have a high instance of getting shin splints. You stay pretty close and tight. And there's different, different tricks or different little footwork patterns you can do with the rope. Craig's going to demonstrate some of them, and so am I. Basic feet together. You can tap forward. You can open and close. You can do a lunging style. You can raise your knees. All different types of skipping rope. Craig's doing some of his own versions. You can raise your knees. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with the rope. So as soon as you're done with the rope, you immediately go into your resistance exercise, which we're gonna go into right now. So as soon as we finish doing the, the uh, skipping rope, we're gonna move over. We're gonna start doing the overhead shoulder presses, which Craig here is gonna demonstrate. So Craig, go ahead and take a stance, a medium stance, which is your athletic stance. You're gonna bend your knees slightly. You're gonna bring the dumbbells over to your shoulders, and you're just gonna press them overhead. Go ahead and press them overhead, Craig. And you're gonna do them for a period of time. Your palms are gonna be facing forwards. You want the dumbbells to come straight overhead. This is an excellent exercise for your shoulders. This is gonna help give the ladies a little bit of uh, extra uh, width so you don't have to wear shoulder pads, which is also gonna help bring your feet look like that your waist has come in a little bit too. Um, I know a lot of women that I train, they like to use, uh, they end up using shoulder pads at first and after they do this exercise, they end up getting a little bit more of that V shape that way they get that hourglass shape that they're looking for. 
So we're going to do this for, for approximately, or you're, you're going to want to do this for 60 seconds. You definitely want to be breathing throughout, just like all the other exercises that we're going through. You're going to exhale on the way up, you're going to inhale on the way down. So an easy way to remember it is to exhale on exertion, EX, EX. How do you feel, Craig? Pretty good. So remember, you're going to want that egg timer or get a little stopwatch and keep it for about 60 seconds. All right, Craig? Yep. Go ahead and put them down. So that was about 60 seconds, and you're going to want to go to a medium or a quick pace, whatever feels right for you. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and you're going to grab, again, light dumbbells. I'm going to show you the squat. So there's a couple ways of doing a dumbbell squat. I'm going to choose to have my dumbbells down at my sides. My feet are going to be about shoulder width apart. My knees are going to be soft. I'm going to sit back and down, keeping my chest open, and I'm going to come straight up. So again, you're going to want to do this for a period of anywhere between 30 seconds to 90 seconds. You're going to inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. Now it's pretty important to push your hips back to your rear while you're keeping your head and shoulders straight up, just facing forward. If you have difficulty, sometimes you might come forward a little bit and your heels come up like so. If you're having difficulty with that, just don't go as low. But you're going to want to work to that depth. So you might only go to this point, just midway. You're also going to want to stretch your calves. And we'll go over our stretches in a future show. But by stretching your calves, it's going to help you get down to a little deeper depth. If your arms get tired, you may want to put the dumbbells on your shoulders and do the squats like this. You're going to inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. Inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. So once you're done with squats, Craig is going to show our next exercise. So go ahead and Craig, take your seat on this box. So like I mentioned previously, this routine is meant to be done anywhere, whether it's at home, very, very uh, light and easy equipment. But this is also a routine that you could also do at your gym that you're a member of. So Craig's going to do what I call the box or bench press. These also could be done on the floor. You just won't have the, have the range of motion for your elbows to come all the way down because the floor is going to stop them. What Craig's going to do, his chest is facing up, his uh, fists and dumbbells are over his chest. He's going to inhale on the way down, bring the dumbbells down towards his lower chest, and he's going to press them straight up. Exhale on the way up. Notice that he's exhaling forcefully. That's going to help remember or remind him to keep breathing. If you do shallow breathing, you're not going to be feeding the muscles the oxygen it needs. So this exercise is for your chest, for your shoulders, and also for your triceps, which are those, uh, some people call them the grandma muscles, because you know people don't like that part of them waving, and they wave uh, goodbye. So this will help tighten up the back of the arms also. And for some people, males included, might give them a little bit more definition in mid-chest. So again, since this is a circuit workout, we're going to keep going for 60 seconds and we're going to move to another exercise. So that's about 60 seconds. When you're done, you're just going to bring them down. You're going to bring the dumbbells towards your, your thighs. And you're going to just gently sit up. And then you'll be done with that. So now I'm going to go, and go ahead and show you the lunge. So I'm going to pick up my light dumbbells. And I want you to also notice that we're going from upper body to lower body. This is going to help bring the blood up and down throughout your body so it's not just pooling in one place. It helps give a higher cardiovascular benefit. Now there's two major things that I see a lot of people in their local gyms doing improperly, even clients that come in uh, with a lunge that's improper and it's actually dangerous. Let me show you the proper way first. 
When you take a lunge, you should take a nice long step forward with your leg extended and land on your heel. So you're gonna heel strike, okay? So once you heel strike, you're gonna think about this rear leg. And you're gonna bring this rear leg, the knee, down towards the floor and then straight up again. I'm gonna do it with the other leg. So you're gonna take a nice long step. You're gonna heel strike. You're gonna take this leg and bring it straight down and then up. On the down part, I want you to notice that I have basically a geometric square here and also behind me. What people tend to do is they tend to think forward. What that ends up doing is that ends up driving them forward. The rear leg is like overextended and they're putting undue, too much pressure in their front leg. And if you notice too, the heel might come up and they feel very unstable. So again, to prevent that, you're just gonna take a step forward and you're gonna push off. You can alternate. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways. So this is alternating. Another way that's also good once you get used to it is walking. So you're gonna take a step, you're gonna come down and straight up. Take a step, come down, straight up. Don't rush yourself. 60 seconds is 60 seconds or whatever time you choose. Straight down, straight up. Forward, straight down, and straight up. So that's the dumbbell lunge. Now Craig's gonna take these dumbbells here and he's gonna show the dumbbell row. So his feet again are gonna be about shoulder width apart. His knees are gonna be bent or nice and soft. He's gonna have proper posture of the back so he has a little bit of a bend here. And he's gonna bring his hips, he's gonna fold at his hips. He's gonna push his hips backwards towards the back wall, let his arms hang. He's gonna look up, his eyes are gonna be up. Now you have a perfectly straight back. You don't wanna be in this position. It's bad for your spine and for your lower back. You want to come forward and you want to be nice and flat. So he's gonna take those dumbbells and he's gonna pull up towards his belly button. Or I like to refer into your pockets and he's gonna lower them. A nice medium pace. Some people do it a little quicker. I tend to go here. Some people a little slower. And there's all different ways of doing it and you could do it for different reasons. So you wanna think about your elbows coming up, not using your upper arms or your biceps. So not towards your chest, you're gonna come up towards your hips. So you can rotate your palms to the rear and as you come up, rotate them forward. He's gonna exhale again as he raises it up and inhale as it comes down. So this is for your back, strengthen your back, also strengthens your lower back. So for people who have lower back pain, starting out with light dumbbells, going for a period of time, 30 to 90 seconds. And over time, as you increase the time up to 90 seconds, you'll feel stronger and you won't have certain problems. So, after 60 seconds, Craig's pretty much done. He's gonna put those down, and now he's gonna quickly come over here to the dumbbells, dumbbell crunch. You can use a yoga mat, you can use any type of a mat. So you're just gonna lay down. You can also do these without dumbbells. I prefer to use dumbbells. So we're gonna go for about approximately 60 seconds. He's gonna bring his hands up over his chest. He's gonna press his lower back into the floor. His hips, his uh, feet are gonna be about hip width apart. So go ahead and press your lower back into the floor. Good, see how there's a little bit of a crease in his shirt? He's gonna raise up, basically just his shoulder blades off the floor. Again, there's a couple ways of doing this. I prefer to hold this for about three to five seconds. You're gonna naturally breathe. Then you're gonna inhale on the way down. Hold it for a moment, relax. Then you're gonna press your lower back into the floor and you're gonna raise up, shoulder blades up. You're exhaling at that part. Then you're gonna take one or two inhales and exhales. That's gonna be about three to five seconds. 
and then you're gonna lower it down. So you're gonna exhale up, inhale on the way down. Rest, press your lower back into the floor, make that crease, and then you're gonna raise up. So again, don't rush yourself. You wanna get the maximum result, the maximum contraction of the abdominals on any exercise. If you end up rushing yourself, chances are you're gonna avoid hitting the target muscle group, which is gonna lessen the effectiveness of the exercise. Inhale down, exhale up. All right, Craig, thanks. That's good, so just relax. So that's pretty much the routine. You're gonna start out with about 10 to 20 minutes on your treadmill or doing interval sprints outside, whether it's walking and sprinting and running. You're gonna to wanna to do it in a circuit fashion, and this is gonna be done in intervals. So the first thing, again, you're gonna start with either treadmill, interval training, running or sprinting, also using your heart rate monitor, checking that, or you could just simply go outside and do it outside. Again, you're gonna do intervals. You're gonna run for 30 seconds or sprint for 30 seconds up to 90 seconds and then walk for another 30 to 90 seconds. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're, after your 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes of running, you're gonna come inside, you're gonna start skipping rope. Again, you're gonna, let's say you choose 30 seconds. You're gonna skip rope for 30 seconds. Immediately after skipping rope for 30 seconds, your timer goes off. You're gonna go and you're gonna do your overhead dumbbell presses. After your dumbbell presses for 30 seconds, you're gonna go and pick up your dumbbells, another set of dumbbells that's probably a little heavier for your dumbbell squats. You're gonna do that again for your legs for about 30 seconds. Immediately after that, you're gonna go lie down on your box or on your bench, and you're gonna do 30 seconds of bench presses for your chest. After that, you're gonna go to your dumbbell lunges for again, for 30 seconds. So remember, we're alternating between upper body and lower body. This helps get the, keep the heart rate up. After your dumbbell lunges, you're, either, you're gonna do your dumbbell lunges either alternating or walking, whatever feels comfortable with you. After that, you're gonna go ahead and do your back with the dumbbell rows. Once you're done with your dumbbell rows, then you're gonna hit your, your abs or your core, you're gonna lie down, and you're gonna do your dumbbell crunches. You're gonna use the dumbbells anywhere between one to five pounds. I wouldn't recommend anything heavier than five pounds unless you're more advanced. Then you might go up to 10 pounds. If just the weight of your arms might be enough, so you might not even use dumbbells. You might just start out with 30 second intervals of just picking your shoulder blades off the floor, holding the contraction three to five seconds, and you may find that you tire out in 30 seconds, and that's okay over time you're gonna build up. You might build up five seconds per week with this routine. This routine, we're just demonstrating it today, going through all seven exercises. Well, you're gonna to wanna to repeat it anywhere between two to three sets. So if this is the first time that you've exercised, you haven't really exercised before, you may wanna go through this routine with really light weights, like five pound weights, and just get accustomed to it and do it just for one rotation or one set. But if you're a little bit more advanced and that we want something more challenging, you're gonna to wanna to build up to doing two circuits or three circuits, which means basically two rotations or three rotations, two sets or three sets of these seven exercises back to back. And that's gonna take you anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. So that's the whole routine for the Fat Loss Secrets. doing your circuit training, that's gonna help you lose weight. You're a huge advocate of good nutrition. Tell me about good nutrition and how it can help you burn fat and lose some weight. Well, for this routine to work, you gotta feed your muscles, which is a third part of this program. And what I mean by feeding your muscles is three parts, I like to explain three parts to doing this. And the first part's hydration. Hydration in the sense of drinking water because your muscles are basically 70 to 80 percent water it's important to keep your muscles properly hydrated if they're not it's like when you go for that run and you don't drink a lot of water you're dehydrated and you end up cramping yeah. that's a symptom of not having enough hydration so you're not feeding your muscle so you need to drink enough water the second part is protein now i prefer now to me protein is mostly animal sources 
Um, so you want to feed your muscles protein because that's what it's made of mostly. And I believe a lot of people don't understand the role of protein. And they have a misinterpretation uh, because a lot of information that's out there. Well, protein will help you keep that lean muscle tissue that you need to enhance your shape. So you because your muscles muscle. create the shape in your body. Ah. Another great thing uh. is that by feeding your muscles the protein it needs, when you have a little extra muscle, you build muscle, you want to build and maintain lean muscle tissue, you actually burn an extra 60 calories per day for every pound of muscle that you have on your body. Oh, I had no idea. You can't say that for fat. No. Fat just sits there and it doesn't make you look good. I kind of know about fat, unfortunately. The third thing is feeding your body the proper amount of carbohydrates. Now, I'm not talking about low-carb diets or anything like that. The proper amount of carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates you basically get from vegetable sources. Um, or potatoes and stuff like that. Stuff that's not animal is primarily carbohydrate. And what carbohydrates do is they give your muscles the energy it needs. Now obviously if you over consume carbohydrates, it's gonna get turned into fat. And if you don't eat enough carbohydrates, you're gonna feel lethargic, you're not gonna get through your routine, yeah. you're not gonna be very motivated. You're not gonna have any energy. So you need to have the right amount of carbohydrates for you to feed your muscles. So that's pretty much my three step process. Wow. And um, how long should somebody keep up this program? When, when can they start seeing some results? It looks like a great program. Well, depending on the individual, it's very important for them to have both sides of the equation, uh, going through the routine and then also the nutrition aspect. Yeah. But if everything is going well, they should actually start feeling better within two weeks. Wow, that's and fast. They could, yeah, and they could actually see a little bit of a weight loss between five to 10 pounds of fat within a month. Wow, that's impressive. I need to get started like right now. I'm gonna have to go. Speaking of having to go, it was great having you on the show, Charlie. Thank you very much, Mary. And Charlie's gonna help us with our weight loss and fitness program throughout the year, and we look forward to our next show. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mary Jirasi.